Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. We spoke with Inverness MLA and Provincial House Leader for the Opposition, Alan McMaster. We talked about safety for workers at the local crab processing plant, and we also brought in questions from the community. Here's our conversation. The crab fishing season in the area has already begun. Um, the fish processing plant here in Shetty Camp started working this week on Monday. Is the province uh, inspecting the plants specifically for COVID-19 safety practices? Well, I think that's an excellent question. And it, it's one I've asked of the provincial government. Um, specifically, is it safe to go fishing right now? Uh, from both the perspective of people who are harvesting in, in, on the water, but also people that are processing seafood that's brought ashore. And also for people that are living in the communities where it's happening, like in Shetikin. So the question has certainly been asked, but uh, we've not received an answer on that. Uh, the communications that we have received from the province, from the provincial government, are that the fishery can proceed. Um, there's a, an online self-assessment tool, and uh, according to that, if you work in the fishery, you can proceed with uh, business as usual. Do you think the province could do more and what? For example, we heard from New Brunswick that they're banning foreign workers from entering the province. Do you think Nova Scotia could have done more and can still do more? Well, the first step is to answer that question about safety. And, and we, need, we would need to have people in public health look at the activity in the fishery. If we look at the largest outbreak of the coronavirus in Canada, it's taking place in Alberta at a meat plant. Um, so, um, people working close together, uh, we've got, uh, as you mentioned, the Brunswick decided they didn't want foreign workers coming in. They didn't want to take that risk. So, um, the decisions that we've seen here is that it's okay for one, for the visiting the Brunswick fish to come in. Two, it's okay for foreign workers to come in from other countries. Um, and, uh, whereas in the Brunswick, we're not seeing that. So, um, it concerns me that, uh, you know, the fishery is seen as an essential service being food, but it concerns me that the decisions around people's health and safety are being left to the fishery itself, um, as opposed to the government uh, looking at it and determining whether or not it's actually safe. And uh, that's why I asked the question two weeks ago, and, and I would like to have an answer to that question, but it's not been forthcoming. If it were up to you, what measures would you put in place regarding this issue? Well, I would listen to the people in public health. They are the experts, but I would, I would engage them. I would ask them to look at it. Um, that's what I've asked the provincial government to do, because I think any decision around the fishery should be based on people's safety. Um, people working out on the, on the ocean, people working uh, at the wharf, people working in the processing plants, and people living in the communities where it's taking place safety should drive all the decisions. And um, we see, as you mentioned in Brunswick, they've made some pretty big decisions not to allow foreign workers in being one. Uh, they even tried, the Premier even tried to cancel the lobster fishing season uh, because he's afraid of the risk. So um, what would I do? I would engage public health officials and I would let that drive whether or not the fishery opens. There's one other item I might raise uh, and that's, there's been a, a delay in the fishing season. And I've received many, many phone calls from fishers who are disappointed with that. Uh, the federal government stated when they, when they delayed the start of the lobster fishery from uh, in the south of, of Inverness from May 1st to May 15th. Uh, and in the north, they're losing one week. So about May 7th or 8th to the 15th. Um, I've received a lot of calls about that. And the federal government said they were doing it for safety reasons. But we saw the Eastern Shore fishery open up earlier uh, in the week. And uh, we see the crab fishery opened up last Friday, uh, which is fishing in some of the same waters. Um, we see um, the South Shore fishery uh, was never paused to implement safety measures given the coronavirus outbreak. So um, I don't think the decision for the delay really had anything to do with, with people's safety or their health. Um, if it did, I guess the question I would ask is why aren't the other areas being delayed as well uh, to implement safety measures? So I know that's a concern for, for fishers and it's, it's something I've been hearing a lot about lately. 
and I've uh, I've done what I can to raise that. And even speaking here publicly on your telecast uh, shows that uh, the concern is is trying to be put out there so that uh, government can hear this because there's a lot of disappointed fishers in the lobster sector right now. What type of concerns were fishers telling you about re regarding the, the fishery? Uh, in terms of the lobster fishery, they're, they're disappointed because um, there's, there's more lobster going to be coming on the market. Meanwhile, they're sitting uh, with their traps on the wharf and they can't get their lobster onto the market. So by the time they do, after May 15th, uh, there's a fear that there'll be even more of a glut on the market. Even more lobsters uh, sitting there with no market to go to the price will drop, um, so they're, they're going to be faced with uh, two weeks where they can't uh, build any volumes of uh, catch, and they're going to be dealing with possibly an even lower price point for every lobster they sell. So that's what they're concerned about. So would you say they, they would have wanted the fishery to start on time? Well, it was my understanding that there was a vote held, and the majority of fishers uh, did not want to delay. I think some wanted the delay, but... Uh, I don't know for sure, but that's that's what I'm being told. I spoke with uh, the president of the Gulf Nova Scotia Fishermen's Coalition. Uh, you know, it represents fishers here in this area, and yes. they were quite happy with the delay. But you're telling me you got a different, that's interesting, a different perspective. Yeah, certainly in, in the southern part of, of Inverness County, in the Inverness South area, uh, there's, I've received a lot of phone calls. This is a question that I received from community members. Um, as you know, the federal, both federal and provincial governments have offered financial help to employees and business owners. But people who have lower income, uh, they're receiving, you know, it's been, income assistance has been increased by $50 a month. And they've noticed that at the grocery store, for example, uh, people are buying more of the cheapest items, so they no longer have access to them. So they're wondering, why is that? Why are governments offering more help to people who already, to begin with, ha had a little more? Well, I'm certainly sensitive to the point you make about the grocery store. Um, that concern has been raised. Uh, I've noticed it myself. Um, I don't shop in the Shetty Camp area, so I'm not sure what the, the case is there, but um, I know the large grocery chains are, um, I personally notice that the pricing has become uh, very, uh, well, you don't see sales so much anymore. And um, I think it's probably because people, you know, if they're going out to shop, they're doing it once a week, they're not going to more than one store, less competition, the prices rise. And uh, so... You know, for somebody who has a larger income, they can handle that. But somebody who's on a smaller fixed income, that's a big issue for them. Uh, so, um, the, so the, your question was, why isn't the government doing more for people who have a lower income? Um, well, I think anybody who's, um, who's out there who um, is uh, finding it difficult, um, please contact my office as a starting point. Um, there are, have, have been some measures. The federal government has increased the GST payment um, by $400. The uh, provincial government, as you mentioned, if, if people who are on income assistance get an extra $50 a month. Uh, Nova Scotia Power, as a private sector entity, is allowing people uh, to reduce their, their payments on the power bills for the time being to contact them. Um, there's, um, you know, uh, the child. Canada child benefit is, is being increased for people who are on lower income. So um, hopefully those measures help, but I am sensitive to the fact that especially with groceries, the prices have kind of gone up and uh, it's, not, uh, it's not easy to go to the grocery store and come home with the same uh, package of groceries you used to for the same price. Most people I think are paying more right now. I think one of the challenges, uh, if we look at groceries, uh, some of the supply chains have come under pressure. We've, we've heard stories about dairy farmers dumping milk, you know, because they, the way our system is set up to protect the farmers so they can earn a, a, an income on, on what they're doing, the supply is very much controlled to match what the demand is out there. And if people are buying less milk and cheese, uh, the farmers have extra milk protein, they're going to dump it because if they put it on the markets, 
the price for those goods is going to drop, you know. So it's, it's a complex issue, um, and uh, we're in a unique time. Competition usually fixes this problem for people. But right now, I think it would almost, you would almost have to go beyond uh, targeting the grocery stores. You would have to look at the supply chains. Another thing that shocks me is the price of, of local seafood right now. When we're hearing about lobster, you know, uh, you know, we're hearing various stories that they might not get much more than $3 a pound. I've heard three to five. Um, the market will tell us eventually, but that's quite low. But yet when you go to the grocery store for local seafood, the price is much, it's much higher than it's, and it usually is for things like haddock and other types of ground fish. So it's a complex issue and it goes beyond the grocery stores into the supply chains where food is coming from. And that's not just the people that are, that are, uh, you know, raising the beef or, or catching the seafood. Uh, it's also the people who are buying it and processing it, and it's and it's the grocers that are selling it to us. And do you think the government could be more involved in that? Well, if if they did, I think we'd be entering some new. The province would be entering some new territory. We'd have to start looking at things, uh, looking at examining all those price chains, and and at the end of the day, these businesses are allowed to act as as they wish. You know. Um, and usually competition solves this problem for us. But if, if the coronavirus, if this period continues that we're in now for a more extended period of time, it's, it's something the provincial government may need to start looking at because uh, if competition isn't going to return and if the supply chains aren't going to come back the way they, they normally are, um, that could lead to uh, consumers calling on the government to take steps to, uh, to deal with uh, prices that may be higher than they should be. Do you think a solution to that might be, instead of getting involved in, in the supply chain, just giving more help to people who have a lower income, more than it's being offered now? I don't know. I'm conscious of protecting the people too, as, as the taxpayers. And uh, uh, there's, there's lots of businesses out there that will be more than happy to, to take the money that's handed out. But we have to remember that when coronavirus leaves us, uh, we want to make sure when we look back that we didn't uh, have government spending money uh, on things that maybe have had other ways to fix problems other than having to spend money to fix them. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to pay for the money the government's handing out right now at some point. We'll be doing weekly interviews with Alan McMaster where we can ask him your questions. You can send them at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.